Is it just me or do you as a content creator find it difficult to know which self-improvement tips to follow that are gonna help you to become the best creator that you can? I can relate. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you five self-improvement tips that really helped me to get clear, focused, and disciplined so I could create the best content I possibly can. And here's a hint. It has nothing to do with tools, equipment, or resources. You ready? Let's jump in. Tip number one. The thing that really helped me to get focused as a creator, as a business owner, an author, a speaker, the number one thing that really helped me to get focused and disciplined was creating a morning ritual. See, there's a difference between a morning routine and a morning ritual. And I want to clear that up right now. A morning routine are all of the things that you have to do to prepare for your day. You have to shower, you have to get out of bed, you have to eat something, you know, you have to brush your teeth. That is a part of your routine. But a ritual is something that you look forward to that's going to give you more clarity, more focus, more peace, and more calm in your day. So for me, once I realized the power of that, it changed everything for me because I would hit snooze 10 times. I never wanted to get out of bed because I wasn't looking forward to starting my day. This was back when I was going to my corporate job. And then when I quit the corporate job and started my own business, I was still struggling. And so I couldn't get excited about getting up and getting out of bed. And what I realized is being a business owner and a creator, we get to use our gifts and our talents to inspire other people, to encourage them, to bring them entertainment, to make their lives better. And so when I started thinking about that, that was one of the things that really inspired me to get up and get out of bed and get at it. But once I decided to do that, I would read all of these books that say, wake up at 6 a.m., wake up at 5 a.m., you know, do this in the morning, do that in the morning. And I tried all of these things and it was just too much. All of these self-improvement tips were just a lot. So what I had to do was figure out what worked for me. And what worked for me was developing a morning ritual. That was the very first thing that I did. So when you wake up in the morning, what are the three or four things that you're going to do to take care of yourself so that you can ease into your day with clarity and focus and discipline? Because as a creator, you know it can be so chaotic. You got to document, you got to create what you're creating, you got to put it out there, you got to promote it, you got to engage with your audience. There's so many things that we have to do. So the best thing that we can do is to start our day on our own terms. You know, so for me, you know, I talk about the four M's of a powerful morning ritual. And the very first one is meaning. You know, I wake up in gratitude. I pray. I say thank you. And being, in, being grateful and being in gratitude is one of the best things that we can do. Because when we're stressed and we're overwhelmed and we're trying to create amazing content, sometimes we, we don't feel the gratitude. We're not grateful that we are able to create content. So we have to wake up in gratitude. So the very first M is meaning. I wake up, I pray, I journal. You know, what, here's all the things that I'm grateful for, right? The second thing that I do is mantra. An affirmation. What is that powerful affirmation that you say to yourself as you're getting ready for the day? What is that powerful statement, right? We have to speak what we want into existence. And so if you're waking up and you're listening to the radio or you're reading the news, you're allowing your mind to be programmed with other things instead of what you want it to be programmed with. So what is your mantra? What is that powerful statement that you have as a creator? What is your mission? And you wake up and you say that to yourself at the beginning of the day. I am powerful. I'm amazing. I'm so fortunate to be able to create content that reaches millions and millions of people. I'm so fortunate that what I create inspires people to be at their best. I'm so blessed and fortunate that I get to create content that makes people laugh. What is it for you? 
You want to wake up and say that to yourself every single day. That is the second M, the mantra. The third M is you have to get moving, right? We're, we're constantly running around doing things, but we need some form of exercise. See, exercise releases endorphins and the things that make us feel good. So when you wake up and you exercise and you take care of your body, you're actually taking care of your mind at the same time. And I don't know about you, I find when I exercise, I just feel good afterwards. I'm ready to start the day. And then the fourth M is mindful journaling. Writing down your thoughts can be so powerful as a creator because as soon as you wake up, you have this, you know, you get these amazing ideas and sometimes they just pass you by because you don't jot them down. And I found that when I just write things in my journal and I come back to them a week later, a month later, or months later, there are so many amazing nuggets in there that are going to help me better myself. And some of those thoughts will help me better my business. And some of those thoughts will help me with ideas to create amazing content. So mindful journaling is powerful. So start your day with a really amazing morning ritual and you will see how it will change your life. Tip number two. We're talking about self-improvement and one of the things that really helped me to go from struggling as a creator to getting focused and creating great content and engaging with my audience was developing powerful habits. See, I knew I had to change my habits. I would wake up and kind of take a little bit of action on my business. I would do a little bit of creating, but it wasn't focused. Like I didn't know what I was going to do when I woke up. I would just wing it. Throughout the day, I would kind of do a little bit of research on what type of content I would create, but not really. And I knew that I had to develop better habits, better habits for myself, better habits for my business as a creator. So what I started doing was looking at other successful creators who are doing what I'm doing. And I started seeing how do they start their day? What do they talk about in terms of their habits? What are some of the things that they do? Where's the discipline in their lives? And I started applying some of that to my life. And I'm telling you this, when you have habits, really powerful habits that are serving you, that are elevating you, that are lifting you up, that are keeping you focused, so that you start to do things on autopilot, that's when you get in your groove. And so I started developing habits personal development habits. I started developing habits around my creating. How am I going to do my ideation? How am I going to come up with ideas? How am I going to test them? How am I going to put them out there in the world? How am I going to monetize them? So I created habits around all of that so that it just became second nature and I didn't have to wake up and guess what should I be working on? What am I supposed to do today? See, when you know what you have to do, That removes so much of the barrier, right? Because so many of us don't take action because we don't know what to do. So when you map that out and it becomes a habit, these are the three things that I have to do today as a creator. It changes the game. No more winging it. Now you know exactly what you have to do. So create better habits and you'll create better content. You'll be able to monetize that content. Your audience will believe you. They'll want to engage with you because they can tell the difference between you just winging it and you really thinking about the content, you really thinking about what you're creating and putting it out there for your audience. So that's the second powerful tip that I learned about self-improvement. The third one is all about learn, unlearn, and relearn. What are some things that you learn that you know that you just have to unlearn? You know that they're just not serving you well. Maybe when you first started this, some of the advice that you got as a creator is you're never going to sleep. Don't sleep for 10 years. Just do the work. Just create, create, create. Forget about sleeping. Well, maybe along the way you realize the importance of sleep. Maybe you realize that you have to get more sleep in order to be at your best so you can create your best content. So that's something that I had to unlearn. What are some things that you have to unlearn? Let me know in the comments. Then you might have to relearn some things that you know 
are really important as a creator. Some things that you might know that are important are going and looking at your analytics, engaging with your audience, asking them what they want, providing what they want. See, these are things that we know, but do we do it? So for me, I had to relearn that. I would just go and create content and then nobody would be engaged or nobody would buy the course or the product. And I would say, well, how come no one's buying this? And eventually I had to realize I should be asking my audience what they want. I remember I spent six weeks creating a whole course and I put so much time into it. I wrote out the lessons. I created workbooks and I put it out to my, my followers and my audience and crickets. Nobody wanted it. And I pushed it for a very long time. And what I realized is that it just wasn't what my audience wanted. And so when I asked people, you know, why didn't they buy it? They said, Coach Stone, that's not what we want. And once I asked them and they told me, I realized I was way off. So I had to relearn that. I knew it, but I had to relearn the importance of connecting with your audience and your followers and asking them what they want before you run out there and create it. And doing my research before I create it. Looking at the analytics before I create it. So that's something that I had to relearn. And then what is something that you have to learn? Maybe you have to get better at video scripts. Maybe you have to get better at recording. Maybe you have to get better at showing up on camera. Whatever that is, there are some things that you have to learn that are going to make you a better creator. And look, I'm not talking about the technicalities of things, right? We all know that. I'm not talking about all of the, the videos that you can watch on here's how to speak better at, on YouTube or here's the lighting or here's the angle or this is the camera. I'm talking about things that you know that are going to make you better as a person that are in turn going to make you a better communicator, that are going to make you better creator. And some of these things aren't necessarily around equipment or technicalities or, you know, the type of camera that you use. These are self-improvement tips that are going to help you, that are going to supercharge your success. So think about the things that you have to unlearn, relearn, and learn. Now, tip number four. This is all about start, stop, continue. What are some things that you have to start doing? What are some things you have to stop doing? And what are some things you have to continue to do? At the beginning of every year, I would set these big goals and these big dreams. As a creator, I want to do this and I want to be on these stages and reach this much people. And it was almost like I was starting fresh every year. And I said, well, wait a minute. There's some things that I obviously have to start doing. There's some other things that I'm doing and that are working really, really well. So I want to keep doing those. And then there's some things that I just need to stop. So think about your start, stop, continue in your personal life, in your business as a creator. What are some things that you need to start doing that are going to energize you, that are going to help you to get focused, that are going to help you to get organized? What are some things that you want to continue to do that are already working? And then what are some things that you need to stop doing? They're just time suckers. They're, they're time wasters. They're not getting where you, where you want to go. They're slowing you down. They're blocking you. They're playing into your limiting beliefs. So they're stopping you from moving forward. What are some of those things that you need to stop doing? Think about this. Write down on a piece of paper, start, stop, continue, and start writing those things down so you can see that list in front of you and you know what you need to start, stop, and continue. Tip number five is all about embracing failure. As a creator, as a business owner, as someone who's on a mission to help more people, inspire more people, entertain more people, you have to understand that you're not always going to get it right. It's okay to try new things. It's okay to fail. But if you don't step outside of your comfort zone, you're not going to push the limits and you're never going to reach your true potential. This was a tough one for me because I don't like to fail. And when I used to fail at things, I would see myself as a failure. And I would put that label on me. Danny, you're a failure. Okay, you tried that book thing, it didn't work. 
okay, you tried this podcast thing, uh, it's okay. You tried this YouTube thing, uh, it's all right, but you're not really successful. And I had all of this negative self-talk in my mind, and I started to label myself as a failure. And so what I did was I would stay inside my little box of my little comfort zone. I wouldn't push myself. And because I wasn't pushing myself, I wasn't growing. I wasn't learning. I wasn't experiencing new things. I wasn't reaching more people because I just stayed comfortable. And so what I realized is failure is a part of the process. Every successful person that you know has failed many, many times. And as a creator, you have to know that you have to push the limits. You got to step outside of where you're comfortable to test out new ideas to listen to your audience and respond with what they want, to create amazing content that maybe you hadn't created before because you were afraid. You got to do it afraid. You got to step outside of that box. You got to know that amazing things are waiting on the other side of fear and you have to embrace that fear. And when you do that, I promise you, you're going to grow and stretch in so many ways. Your content is going to get better. Your business is going to grow. You're going to reach more people. You're going to be more clear about what it is that you want to do in in the world. And people are going to see that and they're going to be attracted to that. But you have to step outside of this box. You got to get uncomfortable. You have to push yourself. And look, it's going to be very awkward. Like, I remember the first time I, I... started my podcast, The Grind and Gratitude Show. I launched the podcast. I didn't know anything about podcasting. I was just mumbling and stumbling through my words. The first 10 episodes were probably terrible. I wanted to quit because I just, I didn't know anything. I thought nobody wants to listen to this. Who wants to listen to me stumble over my words and all these ums and ahs? Nobody wants to hear that. I was terrified. And I almost shut it down. And then I got one message from somebody who said, wow, I love episode five. It really resonated with me. It made me think about my life. And that was the thing that made me realize getting uncomfortable and being afraid to fail is a part of success. And now the podcast has reached people in 65 countries and we've I uh, had 172 episodes, but I kept going. I embraced fear. I embraced the failure. I had some setbacks. Nobody was listening. Very few downloads in the beginning, but I pushed through. And here we are at 172 episodes reaching you know, people around the world. So think about that next time you want to quit. Think about that next time you want to be comfortable or next time you have an idea, then you talk yourself out of it because you're afraid. Embrace failure. So those are the five tips. I hope this has been helpful for you. I know there's so many self-improvement tips out there. And as creators and business owners, it's hard to know which ones to follow. Maybe these ones aren't even for you, but at least they get you thinking about what are some self-improvement tips that you can have that are going to help you to become a better creator. Now, look, I want to hear from you in the comments. Let me know your biggest takeaway from this video. And if you love this video, I'm pretty sure you're going to love this one too.